How come American cruise lines don't have to pay American wages? And what's flags got to do with it? Hey, 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 what's up everybody? Tony from La Lita Loca. Welcome to the YouTube channel. If you're new here, if you enjoy cruising, consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of our new content. So last week I did a video that talked about the wages for crew members on cruise ships, comparing them to the median wage for American workers on a monthly basis. The disparity was pretty decent. Uh, the median wage for American workers back in 2016 was around $2,600 per month. And looking at data just from 2018 from the cruise lines, the very best median data reported by Norwegian Cruise Line was about $1,700 a month. So almost a $900 difference between the American worker and someone working on the cruise ship. But you say, wait a minute, the cruise lines are American based. The big ones are at least Carnival Corporation, Royal Caribbean International, Norwegian Cruise Lines, all based in Miami. Are the wages of their cruise ship crew members less than the American worker? Isn't there some sort of American labor law that should cover it? Well, it's interesting and it has to do with flags. Now, I just recently learned a term that I find pretty interesting. It's an old term, been around since the 1920s. It's called flag of convenience. It's an interesting regulation which allows the owner of a maritime vessel in one country to register that vessel in another country. For example, if you are an American-based cruise company, you can register your cruise ships in another country. And that is pretty much the standard practice for the modern cruising industry. I say this dates back to the 1920s. Uh, one of the prevalent things that was happening in the 1920s in the United States was the prohibition against alcohol. So American flagships were unable to transport alcohol. And some of the ways that people got around that is they started registering their American owned ships in other countries and that way they did not have to deal with the inconvenient regulation of prohibition and that's why these flags are called flags of convenience because they allow you to not be inconvenienced by some of the regulations of your home country this is the prevalent practice of the big cruise lines based in miami yet they register their ships in other countries and there's three countries that are the big ones the bahamas panama and bermuda Many of the times when you go on the cruise ship, you will see the Bahamian flag flying or the Panamanian flag flying or the flag from Bermuda. And what that means is the cruise ship has to follow the rules of the country that it's flagged under. It has to follow the regulations. And let me clue you in, those regulations are not nearly as strong or stringent or enforced as the regulations in the United States. So you can see where this is going. It's not hard to figure out why there's a disparity between American wages and the wages of the cruise line crew member. They're, they're not regulated in an American way. They don't have to follow the minimum wage guidelines set forth by US labor laws. They don't have to follow overtime rules set by US labor laws. They don't have to follow anything set by US labor laws because the ship is registered in another country. It is flagged in another country it could be a flag of convenience. Yeah, so look, you know, it's, it's an interesting conversation. Uh, a lot of people are passionate on both sides. They, some people feel like the crew members make enough money, they make a better wage than they do at home. Some people feel that it's unfair that it's an American-based corporation not paying American wages. And it all revolves into that conversation around what you should do with the assigned gratuities. Should you pay extra? Should you compensate for these people that are underpaid? That kind of thing. It's a challenge, right? It's an interesting conversation to have, but at the end of the day, we are just consumers of services and we're paying to go on vacation. Uh, it, you know, Honestly, if the cruise lines were paying an American wage, our cruise fares would go up. Morally, would we want that? Would we feel you know, justified to see our cruise fares go up so that people get paid better? Or is it one of those issues that we just like to talk about but we don't really necessarily want to do anything about it. I can think of countless people that talk about homelessness or talk about hunger and they don't ever do anything. They don't write a check or they don't donate to a food bank. Uh, is this one of those issues in cruising where it's, it's good to talk about, it's good to say, oh, we wish these folks made more money, but please don't increase my cruise fare. Again, you know, 
I don't know where I fall on this issue. I, I just kind of want to go on vacation, but it is an interesting quandary what our social responsibility is when it comes to the environment or when it comes to people who are working on the cruise ships. Uh, I find it fascinating personally. It's just one of those vacation types. I've never thought about some of this stuff when I've gone on other vacations, so it's, it's pretty interesting to me. But I, I want to know if it's interesting to you. Is this something that you think about when you go cruising? Is it something we should think about? Do you feel like crew members from American companies should have an American wage? Or do you just want to go cruising? I think all of those are valid things to talk about. Leave a comment below. Thanks again for stopping by. Please hit the like button if you enjoyed the video. Follow us on all of our social media. This is Tony with La Lida Loca. And until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.